Welcome to another segment of Provocative Conversations, destined to provoke further thought and spark greater questions regarding God, church, and the religious establishments of both the past and the present. I am the proud heretic, Mr. Provocateur himself. The God concept. What is the God concept? What do I mean when I speak of the God concept? Well, I guess first you would have to define for yourself this God thing, this God person, this God being. <clears throat> your conceptualism, your concept, your conceptual notion, your conceptual idea, your conceptual thought processes, uh, your perception, your impression. Your theory, your hypotheses, your view, your belief regarding God. I think this is the best place to start because your concept of God will determine your concept of you. Your concept of God regarding you will ultimately determine or at the least directly impact, have a great influence upon your perception and how you perceive, how you deal with people, how you deal with things, how you deal with certain subjects, certain so-called sin. Your concept of God. So this God concept thing is a serious matter because it ultimately de determines your view inwardly and outwardly. Both of God towards God, of people towards people, of yourself toward yourself, toward your comings of short, your so-called shortcomings falling beneath the mark, failing to reach a particular mark. So how you conceive God or who God is, is very vital to everything in regards to your understanding of God, your experiences, your realities, that which you perceive as being real or true. So it's necessary to get your foundation correct as it relates to who God is. I'm not going to define for you who God is in the sense of giving a personal definition of him for you to uh, adhere to. I will perhaps give my view from my perspective, from my concept of God, but it's just that my perspective, my concept. Now, for the most part, my perception and my concept will weigh heavily upon uh, stuff that I've searched out in my years of constant study, my many years of setting myself apart to understand God, to understand the, the the whole concept of God. I was never I was never satisfied with people's concept of people's people's perception, people's traditional view or traditional definition of who God is. I always knew that there was something person always in the sense of always since the early nineties understood that there is a personal side of God, a personal understanding of God that no man, no one man, no one woman could give me. I knew that because as I began to come into a greater understanding of God, those times of me coming into or doing the, 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 the times that I was 
becoming more into God, becoming more understanding of God, becoming more experiential with God. Those times were wrought through times of me being alone, me going through some of the lowest moments of my life, even up until this very day. Those were low moments. I won't say they were the lowest moments, but at the the time and and days that those things occurred that uh, caused me to experience and to shape and form my concept of God, they were the lowest at those times. But in comparison, um, if I were to sit and think and, and weigh matters out, I would have to say, for the most part, things got tougher. And even in those tougher times, it just brought me or catapulted me in a quiet way. I'm not saying that I understood what was going on at the time, but I can look back now and see how those moments and those times, those rough moments, those low times, those low periods in my life where it seemed that no one wanted to be around me, no one wanted to be affiliated with me, not even family. They can have their own views as to why A man is known to justify himself. I'm not here to condemn those individuals. I'm not here to justify those individuals definitely by far. But even in others, you know, one thing we have to understand about views is we all have it. We all have a view. So I'm giving my view. I'm giving what I lived through. And from my view of things, So many had turned their backs upon me, uh, had counted me out, heard rumors, heard lies, heard uh, things that, how would I say, things that (sighs) to this very day, I'm not even wholly sure what they heard. But whatever it was that they heard or they think they know, they ran with it like, wildfire out west on a windy dry day in the hills of california it just spread like wildfire whether it was spread it through through words or whether it was spread it throughout the individuals who felt that they thought that they knew something it spread it but it was in those type time periods that god began to show me himself and i realized that To gain a proper concept of God, you will have to be alone often. And it's not by your so-called choosing, but it's by design. It's by divine design. It's by God design. So whenever you think you want to know more of God and you really want God to show you himself, you know, there's a verse in the Bible or an area in the Bible where in the Old Testament where one of the guys asked God, you know, uh, show me you, show me yourself. And God showed his back part, his hinder part to them. And they, some people, if God were to ever show you a portion of him, it wouldn't be the showing that would humble you as much as it would be The event, the experience, the thing that God would use to show you himself. That would be enough for you to say, sort of like the children of Israel said when they had left out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness and they were like, Moses, we don't want to see your God. We don't want to hear from him. We don't want him to talk to us. This is too scary. This is too freaky. You know, do something, uh, intercede for us, stand before us. We'll listen to you, Moses, but just don't let us have to hear this God anymore. It's just too much. I believe that if if we understood what it takes to attain, A-T-T-A-I-N, attain to a greater concept, a more accurate concept of God, that we would be so afraid. Not so much of God. I guess it will probably lead to a fear of God. We will be so afraid of what we would have to go through 
once we begin to experience what we would have to go through, that we would just say, never mind, forget that, forget I ever asked that God, (laughs) which is something that I didn't do, regardless of what I went through. There were times that I would say, God, how much more of this? How much more can I deal with? How much more? I'm, I'm tired, God, I'm tired. And then still within myself and or something within me would still say, but you know what, God, do what you got to do. Now, that came through time and experience with these things and with God and seeing God's delivering power in, in, in multiple situations in my life that created that sort of like Jesus said when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, Lord, not my will, but let your will be done. Basically, that's what I was saying. God, forget about me. If this is going to do me right, if this is going to get me to the next level, if this is going to purge me, if this is going to get me right for whatever it is you have for me, then so be it. Do what you got to do. It hurts. I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. I don't like the way it makes me feel. I'm, I'm, it, it embarrasses me. I don't like people to see me vulnerable or seemingly vulnerable like this here. I don't like to be stepped upon. I don't like to, to, I know I went through a time period where I didn't even have a vehicle. Here I had multiple children and I had no vehicle. I had seven kids and no vehicle. And there was a story behind the vehicle. The vehicle was not something that I chose to do. It was something that I was led to do. And it was the hardest thing because people, church people would ride by me. People who I was affiliated with, who who I was breaking bread with, as David said in the book of Psalms. It wasn't my enemies. It, it was the very people that I broke bread bread with, that I sat with, that I prayed with, that I worshiped with. These are the people who would pass by me and they would pass by me in the cold winter. They would pass by me on rainy days, cloudy days on their way to church and me on my way to church. Some of those individuals would open up the church and be the first to get to the mic at the church. And they would ride right by me. And some of them would even have the audacity to blow the horn at me as they rode by me with my children, pushing my kids or whatever, because people felt that I had missed the mark of God in my life because they measured me based upon the material possessions that I had based upon decisions that they had no revelation, no God revealings of. In other words, they just prejudged me based upon their concept of God, based upon their perception of God. But it was moments like that or like those that, because it wasn't just a fact that there were several moments like that, multiple moments like that. Sometime it will be 12 at night, one in the morning. I will be walking home from uh, New Year's Eve several years and 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 because this went on for some years and 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 individuals will ride right by me. It'd be 20 degree weather and they will ride right by me after dancing and shouting and everything else at church and pouring all of their monies out at the altar and getting everybody else rich and wealthy, if not rich and wealthy, richer or wealthier. And they would ride right by me that very night. And I would get home two thirty, three in the morning, freezing cold, hands cold, feet cold. But I, with a suit on, with a full suit on, a suit that I couldn't even afford because that was what I was required to do. It was those type moments that gave me the actual greater concept of God. So when I deal with the concept of God, I guess you would first have to define God. Now, a dictionary would typically define God as a being, a being, B-E-I-N-G, a being conceived as the perfect, omnipotent, Omni mean all encompassing, uh, omnipotent, all powerful, 
omniscient above and before all you know the bible does talking about talk about god being the alpha and the omega the originator the ruler of the universe the principal object of faith and worship in monotheistic religions mono meaning one countries or nations or communities or churches that worship one god that's how a dictionary would define it a being of supernatural powers or attributes especially a male deity fought to control some part of nature or reality one that is worshiped or idealized not idolized however some do idolize him, idealize, I-D-E-A-L-I-Z-E, idealized or followed. I think a lot of people have an ideal of God, but this ideal of God is um, this ideological fault or concept or perception of God isn't necessarily based on anything beyond tradition, beyond a few written scriptures in the Bible. The Bible is something that I'll get on even more. But please note before you hear me touch on the Bible itself, I will make it clear about this. I believe that the Bible is a good foundation, a good starting point. And I believe that the hand of God is in the Bible, on the Bible, in the sense that the hand of God is on everything that God creates. His hand is no less in that than in this, in this than in that. God's hand is equally involved. Now, I just open or 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 peaked into spoke into a great realm of conversation that there's no way that I can get on that right now. However, I will touch on that. You best believe that because that's part of the foundation of where I come from. When I talk about these revelatory conversations that God has had with me during the intimate moments of my life, in my life, throughout my life, that I know formed and shaped my concept of him, my concept of him. So I will not define who God is for you, but understand that the God that I will be speaking of is the God that the majority of Christians understand quite well. I am, I am not, I am, how would I say this here? I am not claiming Christianity. I am not denying Christianity. I am not claiming Christianity. But if Christianity means anything like what I see and like what I've experienced throughout the course of my life, then to hell with Christianity. The Christianity that I will not deny is the Christianity that is more of the Christ-like concept that holds to the principles and the standards of Christ, the basic principles, the basic elements. The Bible or Jesus said it like this. He said, all the law is hinged upon, centered upon, held up upon the one law to love, L-O-V-E. Now, if that is Christianity and if that is the basis of Christianity, then so be it that I am a Christian. But if it is not on that and it is only on the Pharisee, Sadducee type, judgmental, condemning, hell driven fear factored rhetoric that most preachers 
so-called preachers, most speakers, most whoever are writing about and speaking about and spewing about and even standing in proxy as God supporting even those such as a Trump or someone of that nature or a Trump mindset. Let's put it that way. A Trump type mindset. If that is what Christianity is, I want no part of that. No part of it. And I don't claim that. Now, if you speak forth and speak for me and tell others regarding me and my non-Christian likeness or my statements in my own word that I am not a Christian, make sure you give them both aspects of the Christianity that I'm referring to. Because there are two aspects that I'm given. So distinguish the two. Do us both a favor and let's walk in love in the sense of remember the greater of these is love and love culminates the entire law. Just love. So do not put hatred out on me or cause others to hate me because of something that you misquoted about me. As far as concept goes, the concept of God, the concept of God is the word concept uh, defined. It's something that somebody has thought up. I wonder how much of the concept of God that you possess or even I possess that somebody else thought up. And I'm ascribing to or you ascribing to. Now, I can tell you, I've done some acid tests on what I believe, and I rarely listen to uh, people. Rarely, very rarely do I listen to people. Why? Because I don't want to receive someone else's concept, some thought that someone else made up regarding God or regarding Christ. Some would even say that. The concept that I hold of God is something that I thought up. No, this is deeper than thought up. And as we go on, you will see that this is much deeper than something that is thought up. A concept is something that somebody might be able to imagine. It's a broad, abstract idea or a guiding general principle what is the God principle now I can tell you how the Bible say the God principle is the principle of love that's the God principle and if you aren't operating in the principle of love then you're not operating in God and perhaps your concept of God is all wrong if what you teach and what you preach is not based upon love and based upon love winning, not only in the end or at the end of the day, but throughout the process of the day. Not only at the end of your message or at, not just at the beginning of your message, but at the end of your message and all through your message. And if your message is not built upon the guiding general principle of love, then you aren't being guided because the general principle of love is God himself. He is the general principle because the Bible says that God is love. Now, please understand that I am going to use the Bible as my reference point for a lot of things. For reasons, I have my issues with the Bible. I do. And I reserve the right to have my issues with the Bible because if you study it like I've studied and if you spent the time like I have and if you've shut out all the naysayers and all the traditional Phariseeic, Sadduceeic voices in your life, perhaps you could come to a greater understanding as well. You let experience get a hold of you. 
You let life get a hold of you. And let's see what end you come out on when it comes to the Bible, Scripture, God, love, judgment, mercy. Because it's those things, the experiences that that you go through that shape and form those true and tried elements of Christianity or of Christ or of God. So concept, a concept is one that determines how a person or a culture behaves or how nature, reality, or events are perceived. Because, see, your concept of God, again, determines how you behave. It determines what's real to you. What is the reality? It, 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 your concept of God brings you into a greater view of reality. It forms how your events are perceived by you. That's why they say two people can have the same event, the same situation and come out with different understandings, different perspectives. Uh, Two people can see the same thing and then experience the same thing, but see something totally different. It, It has to do with concept. Where's your concept on things? And the God concept being the foundation by which all other concepts are experienced, uh, realized, or embraced, or shunned. Being that the God, God concept has that much impact upon everything in your life, it's necessary for you to have a proper concept of God. It's the most basic understanding of something. The God concept. What is your most basic understanding of God? The most basic understanding of God is for God so loved. Not just you. Not just me. Not just them. Not just us. But that he loved the world. That he gave. He gave. He gave. If your concept of God is not a a concept of loving, of giving, not just to your own, because Jesus didn't just come to the Jews. He came to the Gentiles as well. He didn't just go into Judea. He went into Samaria as well. If your concept of God is not one that that compels you to give, that compels you to love, not just your type, not just your race, not just your church members, not just your family members, not just those who are in your class bracket, but that he loved the he he loved the world. If your concept of God don't cause you to love all in every. Then your concept of God may very well be wrong. A concept of a, is a way of doing or perceiving something. What you do, how you do, when you do, to who you do. How you perceive, if you perceive, when you perceive, whether you perceive. It all has to do with your concept. It's a method. It's a plan or it's a type of product or design. God conceived all that he has done and is continuously doing. He first conceived this. No woman can bring forth a child except she first conceives Perhaps that's why we can't bring forth the God-like character in us because we've yet to properly conceive. Our concept hadn't been conceived yet. 
our true concept of God or the true concept of God. We've received some type of concept, but whether or not it's the true concept, that's the question. The God concept it is what forms I, our ideas, our notions, our thoughts, our perceptions, our impressions, our conceptions, our theories, our hypotheses. You can't even acid test a thing properly unless you first have two different variables. You have to have a proper concept of God to even begin to, to acid test something else. In order to test a lie, you got to have some truth. In order to truly understand darkness, you got to have some light. You have to have a basis by which you have to have a proper concept. My God concept of things, the way that I conceive God and the way that I perceive God is where I'll be speaking from and is where I speak from. If you ask God for nothing else, you should be asking God for a greater, a deeper concept, a more perfect, a clearer concept of him. I hear so many people say this here. Well, there's just so many things that we'll never know on this side of earth. If God meant for me to know what he would. Oh, please, please stop making space. Stop making reasons as to why you have not grown. You have not moved on to the deeper elements of God, the, the greater depths in God. Now, it's not about God not wanting you to know as much as it is you not caring to know. One thing that I I pushed for since the early 90s with God was that. God, whatever it is, I think I know. I'm willing to give up what I think I know in order that I might know. Paul said it like this. I count it all as dung. Do do. In order that I might receive, that I might gain, that I might attain to that which I don't know, that which I don't have, that which I hadn't reached, that I hadn't received, that I hadn't perceived, that I hadn't properly conceived. It should always be a desire for us to conceive, to perceive, to conceptualize more than what we have thus far. That has been my desire for years and years and years. God, I want more. This isn't it. I know this isn't it. I know there's more. And I'm willing to give up that which I think I have in order that I might get more. Don't worry about what I have. And I'm not worried about what I might lose as much as I am about wanting to gain more than what I ever had. If you can't let go of what you think you have in order to gain what you don't have, you're going to probably have a problem in all of this here because, you know, there are verses in the Bible where it talks about denying yourself. And the rich man said to Jesus, you know, and I'm really speaking regarding the principle of the matter. That's all just the principle the the, the, the principle being, he said, Lord, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? And then Jesus said, look, you're not far from the kingdom, kingdom of God. You're not far from it. Now go sell all that you have and follow me. The guy, I don't know if he said follow me, but go sell all that you have. And the guy, he walked away saddened because the Bible says that this guy was rich. He had much. And he couldn't see himself losing his status, losing his clout, losing his buddies, losing his bragging rights. He couldn't see himself giving up that which he had obtained or had uh, attained to. He wanted it or so he made it seem, but really he never truly wanted it. He was just talking. The Bible says no man build a house unless he first sit down and, and count up the cost 
of course, Proverbs speaks regarding a fool and says that fools, they just continue on in their foolishness and they're destroyed. How bad do you want it? That's where we have so many isms and schisms and and other things in the Bible or not in the Bible. Well, (laughs) in the Bible as well, but out of the Bible or in our everyday life, in the everyday churches of today. Because people have the wrong concept of God. The God concept is where they're lacking. They don't have a whole, a holistic concept of God. They have a portion of God that may very well be true. And then they have another portion of God that's true only in its traditional uh, essence. It's just a traditional truth, a truth that those who are stuck in tradition hold to be true. But tradition doesn't make a thing true. Practice and belief doesn't make a thing true. Many people believe lies. Many people hold to lies. Does that make it true because they hold to it? No, it's still what it is. We have someone right now in political office who is lying daily, has told thousands of lies. Not that I personally have not. Because I'm sure I have in my time. However, this person has told thousands of lies, recorded lies. And yet and still, people still say, I've never heard him lie. So there you have it. People who at least claim to believe a lie. But just because you believe a lie. Doesn't mean the lie then becomes the truth. It's still what it is, a lie. When it comes to the God concept, make sure your concept of God is right. Where did you conceive your ideals of God? Where did your thought processes regarding God come from? And don't say, ah, just the Bible. The Bible in itself is not enough. To give you a proper God concept. The Bible goes here and there and everywhere. There are verses in the Bible that agree with stoning people. Killing them. There are verses in the Bible that approved of slavery. And it stated that if you are a slave. Don't you dare seek to be free. But I thought that Jesus came to set the captives free. And I thought that. You believe the Bible. (laughs) Well, I guess Harriet Harriet Tuckman was wrong. I guess the whole story of Roots was wrong. I guess Alex Haley was wrong. Uh, All the players in there, uh, I think Louis Gossett Jr. and, 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 and multiple other people, I guess they were all wrong. They all missed their call. I guess all of that was a fake all the museums about slavery and all of that, that that validates roots or the truth about roots is wrong. And if that's true, then we're all in trouble. We have to get our concept right. That's what I'm about, making sure that my concept of God is right. There's nothing worse than a bad concept, a bad foundation. We get God so wrong, not so much because of our defining of him, but because of how we listen to how others defined him. And we've never searched it out for ourselves. So I would admonish you to get a proper perspective of God, gain a greater concept of God. It's there for you. Trust me, it's there. Accept it for what it is. Accept God for who he is. And I'll do my darnness to add knowledge to the God concept to help whoever can be helped, will be helped in these recordings. Gain a better perspective, a greater perspective, a deeper, more intimate perspective of who your God is.